Welcome back and thanks for joining us. If you're new to our channel, please hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you'll be notified of each new video. In our last video, Jim and Tammy gave us a walkthrough tour of their 2019 Escape 5.0 TA fifth wheel. Even though it was their first RV, they had done their homework and were incredibly well equipped. In this video, we take you on another walkthrough of our Escape 5.0 TA and discuss how we feel about it six months after our purchase. Can you believe it? Believe what? It's been six months already. Oh my gosh, it goes by so fast. It's been six months that we've enjoyed Casablanca. Yeah. Now, I bet you guys are wondering if we still feel the same way. Have we lost that loving feeling? Is there anything else that we would change? Have we made any improvements? Well, today we're here to answer those questions for you. So we're going to give you a little walkthrough of our trailer, see how we have it set up, see if we've added anything to the trailer and let you know if we've solved any problems that we've had. Now, one of the first things we purchased was this lovely tripod. So now we did find that the escape was a little bit wobbly when we walked back in forts. And we actually got this tripod for, I believe it was 20 or $25 marketplace. Great buy, great purchase. And it does make a difference. So I don't know why she was wobbling. I'm not sure if the front jacks were a little bit too high or whatever reason that it was. Having this made a difference. I was looking at them brand new and they were going for about 80 to $120. And honestly, it's just a tripod. Oh, uh, you could find tons on Marketplace, Facebook, and it's such a great tool because it works with your GPS. It's nearby. And especially if you're around Florida, for example, there's tons of fifth wheels for sale and people usually tend to sell their accessories. And that's how we ended up getting this one for, I think it was $25. So happy we did it because I think it's less, it's less wiggle on the front jacks, right? So it makes me feel a little bit more secure. And yeah, so if you have a fifth wheel and you're worried, do you feel that your escape is, is lacking stability? Honestly, for $20, $25, it's a great purchase. The con of this that I would say is just the lock. Right, so you're not able to put the safety lock on, on the trailer. If we're at a campground, I'm not so worried because you have tons of neighbors, you have a front gate, you do have people going back and forth all the time. If you're boondocking, well, listen, you could easily put it. If you're gonna go explore and leave your trailer by itself, remove it, put your lock back on. It creates a little bit more of work uh, to secure your trailer. So the next thing that we purchased for the outside Let's take a look at the tires. One of the things that was on our checklist was the tire pressure. Now we have double axle, four tires. So to make it easier, we ended up buying this little gadget. All right, it was $20 and you get four. And simple, it actually reads the pressure that you have on it and it changes color. So right now it's green. The lower it gets, then it will go to yellow and then red. So green is good. So it's been a while since you've been inside. So I'm going to take you inside. But first, I want to talk about the awning. We love the awning. The only real maintenance that we have to do is after it's rained, we have to make sure we let it out, let it dry. Otherwise, later on, we're going to have to clean off the mold because it does get moisture inside. So if it rains and you leave it for several weeks, then you will have to use a product to scrub off the mold. So an easy preventive measure for that is really just to open it on a sunny day after it's rained. 
All right, so let's go inside. You may have noticed that we have this pocket door. Now the new escapes don't have this. They have the swinging door and also it doesn't open all the way, but I do appreciate that this door opens all the way because I feel like if I have a big bag to come through here, if the door is like stuck right here, it just gives me a little bit more clearance. So just an observation, something that I really appreciate about our trailer. This is our bed area. And what we generally do is we store some of our things over here, right there. And at the moment we have the escape hatch open just to provide a little bit of light in there. This is a new addition. It's a Vizio. It's actually a smart TV. And this does plug into the 110 volt but we had the Naxa TV before. It was a 22 inch. It was not a smart TV. The quality was lacking in our opinion. The one advantage was that it would connect to the DC plug. So you could be on 12 volt if you're dry camping, but we don't use the TV enough for that to be an issue for us. We thought it was necessary to change it just because the technology has changed so much since that TV was first put out. So this is actually two inches larger than the Naxa. It's a 24 inch. And what we found is it's actually lighter than the previous TV. And since this particular trailer has uh, the antenna, we do benefit from a lot of free channels, even when the campground where we're staying doesn't have a cable hookup. So this was a great purchase. We got it at Walmart. It happened to be there on the shelf for $118 US. So we just grabbed it. So that is a big time improvement to what we had before. So this is a 720p and the only difference between this one and the 1080p is probably about $20, but we're like, eh, do we really need such high resolution? It's, I mean, we don't watch it that often. It's not like it's our home TV. It's really just, you know, for the trailer. So we opted to save the $20 and just use a 720. <laughs> I'm busted. <laughs> I do appreciate that. So one thing that we do absolutely love and think is essential is the Dyson vacuum and we didn't have space for it in the casita, but it's so easy to vacuum that actually even Dory vacuums a lot of the time. <laughs> probably. I don't like dirty floors. <laughs> yeah, he probably vacuums most of the time actually. So we just fit this under this storage step right here. And then we fit our shoes down here. And it charges right here. Yeah, so it only actually charges on 110 volt when we're hooked up to shore power, but that's fine because the amount of times that we boondock doesn't really make a difference. I've made no secret of the fact that I love this fridge. It is absolutely massive. However, those dinky little plastic shelves that are inside are not great for traveling if you have anything heavy on it. So I had a two liter of soy milk on a shelf like this that was down here. And while we were traveling, it broke. When we went to the RV Tampa Super Show, we spoke to somebody at Dometic who showed us how to order it online. However, it's $100 US, which eh, it's a little pricey for what it is. So what I opted to do instead is I brought in one of these shelves to Lowe's and asked them to cut a piece of plexiglass to size. So as you see, it's working really, really well. I actually have it reinforced and it's a thick piece of plexiglass. It costs us $30 US and really it does the job. So we may later on opt to spring for the hundred dollars if we resell the trailer but for now it's working fine for us and we actually find that it's stronger than what came with the fridge but as you can see we make the most of the space that we have so it's usually filled up it's very rare that there's much space in here because i fill it up like crazy and especially since 
we got that big flat of strawberries. So right now we have so many frozen strawberries. We just finished the fresh ones that we had. I think more than half of it went in the freezer. So we have so many strawberries, but I don't have to worry about things like that. I can stop by the side of the road, buy a big flat of strawberries, put some in the fridge, put some in the freezer, and then we're on our way, right? If we had a smaller fridge, we wouldn't be able to do that. So we just love the size of this fridge and otherwise it works very well. Another little accessory that we bought for the trailer, as we all know, the LP gas is rather expensive if you're using your furnace all the time. So it's great if you're dry camping, it's great if you're at Walmart. However, if you have shore power, if you're at a campground and you don't wanna use your LP gas, then getting a mini heater like this is really essential. At least it was for us. Now, there are a couple caveats to having this. So there have been times when we had a few things going on at the same time. So the microwave and the heater and I think the fan or a few things going on at the same time. So we tripped the breaker and what happened was that everything that was on circuit two was not working. This was actually not plugged in over here. It was plugged in on a circuit two plug. So had it been on circuit one, it probably wouldn't have been an issue. And Lucy and Charles were so great that they actually labeled all of the plugs so that we know what's on what circuit. So we know that the microwave is on circuit two. We know that certain plugs are on circuit one. So that kind of gave us an idea that we had too many things on circuit two. Then we didn't know how to reset the breaker and Finally, going through some forums and having spoken with Lucy and Charles, we found it. So we wanna share that with you in case the same thing happens to you. So, in our fifth wheel at least, this is where the breaker is located. So you see those two right there? One of them had tripped and we had to reset it. So, that was a learning experience for us and now we no longer put the heater on circuit two, we only put it on circuit one. And even then, just to be safe, we turn off the heater when we're using the microwave. It's probably unnecessary. However, that's just something that we do now. I love that we could access these batteries from the inside of the Escape. Compared to the Casita, honestly, it was a wrestling match. So this one is super easy. You remove the cushion, you remove this lovely plate. Once you get in there, these batteries are awesome. Again, I'm not sure if it's every escape like this or just ours, but twist, pull out. We could see the levels to see if they need water or not. We use the turkey baster to fill up the water cells in the battery and you just make sure they're covered and the maintenance is done. So I love the fact that it's super accessible from here. It's a good thing we're down here. We can actually check it at the same time. <laughs> exactly. They might need a little bit. Mm, looks good. Yeah. The cells are covered. So, easy maintenance. Love it. Because this was something I used to dread with the Casita. Our biggest complaint of all, and one of the only things really that we were complaining about with the Escape, is the condensation. So when it was cold outside, and it was warm inside, we had really, really bad condensation on the back wall behind the bed and in the dinette between the cushions and the vinyl walls. So we didn't know enough at that point to understand why that was happening and how to prevent it. Jim and Tammy were good enough to explain a way to counter that. And since we've employed their suggestions, we have not had a problem. So the number one thing that you want to do is when you're heating and it's cold outside, so we use the little heater, you may be using the furnace. The number one thing you want to do is have the vent on. So say at about 20% because the vent on out at about 20% is going to draw all of that condensation and it's going to suck it out of the trailer. So that's the number one way to keep the humidity and the condensation out of the trailer when it's cold outside and it's warm inside. So we would use a little heater. 
we started to at night and that's really when we had the biggest problems because here in Florida it's no problem during the day most times but it's at night it would get close to freezing so we would put the fan on out 20 to 30 percent but on top of that we also have this little gadget that Jim gave us where is it so this actually reads your level of humidity so it tells you what the temperature is, but also what your humidity is. So you want to make sure that that's under 60%. Now today is not a humid day. So luckily we're at 34% relative humidity. Now you want to kind of make sure that that's always, it's probably because I have my fingers on it that I just raised, but you see the smiley face? We're good. That's a cute little gadget you can get off Amazon. And he was good enough to give that to us to see if that would solve our problem. So I'm going to stop touching it because I'm raising the humidity clearly. So the other thing that we do that also helps, even if it's close to freezing outside, another thing that we will do to help that is we'll have these windows here open just a crack. So what that's doing is most of the condensation is right here because when we're sleeping, we're breathing hot air and it's a very enclosed space. So it's drawing air from outside because the fan is on out and it's drawing all the condensation that we're creating from our breath and it's drawing it out. So really just a crack. And we do have to have it around 19, 20, 21 degrees in here for the dog because she gets very cold. She doesn't have a lot of fur. So otherwise we could keep it much colder because we have very warm covers. But for the dog especially, we have to make sure it's warm in here. So with these two windows open a crack, the fan on out 20 to 30 percent and the heater on, we have not experienced an issue. Every time I get up, if I get up to go to the bathroom, when I get up in the morning, the humidity is always below 60 percent which is, that's your happy place, that's where you want it to be. Especially if you're in this trailer and you want to have it long term, you want to keep the humidity in the trailer very low so that you can keep it a long time, so that it's on the road for 20, 30 years. Now, if you want to go a step further and control the humidity in the cupboards, then I definitely recommend you take a look at the video we did with Jim and Tammy. They have dehumidifiers. One of them is called Evadry and the other is called ProBreeze. And they have several of them that they've strategically placed throughout the RV to control the humidity even further. Now, we're not at that point yet. We still haven't invested in those, but I definitely see the value in those dehumidifiers. And that's gonna be a purchase for us in the near future. Ever since we've started to employ these suggestions, we have not had an issue with condensation. So in the mornings, what I'll do is I'll check the relative humidity. It's always below 60 and I'll check the walls. So I'll you know put my hand on the walls back there, on the sides, in the dinette behind the cushions. And we've never had an issue since we started that. There was one question that we received, right? About whether there was some kind of damage that we noticed going from minus 29 Celsius to plus 29 Celsius. Now, the only thing, if I remember correctly, is the Wii Boost, right? Yeah, we had a, our, something happened to the Wii Boost. It wouldn't turn on, but after we leave it on for a couple of hours, everything lights up. Yeah, so either it's because of the huge difference in temperature that we traveled through. Mind you, we didn't travel through those temperatures I mean, in the space of a few hours, it was really over several days, right? Yeah. So it also could have been the accumulation of snow and ice on top of the trailer that kind of jiggled the wires. That's what I was thinking. But then again, no. who knows? I, I don't think it was that because it was working fine before we winterized it. Yeah. And when we got to Florida, we turned it on and it wasn't turning on and just left it on because we didn't want to turn it off or whatever. I don't know what was the reason we left it on and the lights came back on. Just like that. Even yesterday, we were boondocking and we didn't want to drain the battery. So I'm not even sure how much it draws, but we had it closed. We got to the campground 
all the lights were still off and after a few hours it came back on yeah so, so i mean there's no point in really getting a diagnostic or anything because it is working after a while like once we turn it on it does turn on after a couple hours so that's a big mystery but that's the only thing that we notice coming from north to south and extreme temperatures and we don't even know if that's related to the extremes in temperature right it's the only thing i'm assuming because it was working fine back home yeah so let's take a look at the bathroom and how we use the bathroom so this is our bathroom we have a beautiful window that brings in a lot of light and you'll notice that i have a shower caddy there that's because i use the showers and we both use the showers at the campgrounds if we're dry camping we mostly do sponge baths and we'll just use a shower head to rinse off so that works best for us it is a small bathroom but the size of the bathroom has not been an issue because we don't use it that much and the toilet as you can see it is not the composting toilet we've kept the same toilet that was original to the trailer and we only use it for liquid waste we don't want to deal with the sewage we don't want to deal with the formaldehyde and the chemicals that are used for the black tank so it is just liquid waste anyway right now we're relying a lot on campgrounds because we always have to be connected either through cell data or wi-fi so we're always using the bathrooms anyway so it's not been an issue up to now and i guess if it ever becomes an issue we're going to report to you how we worked around it but for now it's working great we still have our composting toilet we haven't sold it or gotten rid of it we definitely think it could be useful um maybe with a different rv and we definitely see the value in it but just not for the style of camping that we're doing right now now another thing that we do to keep the toilet nice and fresh is that once we use it we just spritz it and that keeps it fresh between between washings so what i have inside the bottle is i use it's a combination of water dish soap and tea tree oil and the reason why i use tea tree oil is because it's a natural antibacterial that is chemical free because i don't want bleach in here um i don't want bleach in here unnecessarily unless i would absolutely need to use it because it's extremely toxic for our systems and it, it gives me really really bad headaches and also sinus congestion so i use tea tree oil instead do you want to say about the plug oh yeah guys honestly do never forget this the plug that's down here okay it's a plug down there and obviously if you're taking a shower you want to have the plug open so that it drains into the gray tank however if you're getting close to full in your gray tank you don't want to have that open because that's going to fill up before your sink fills fills up so what I discovered one day when I had forgotten to plug it again is that it, it filled up with water and I couldn't understand why there was water there. And I'm like, oh, darn, we're full. Our gray tank is full. And that was the first thing to fill up. So that was like a big mess to clean up. And on top of it, I just felt so lucky that we discovered it when we did, because had I not discovered it at that point, then we would have had a major water leak in here that would have damaged the wood. So that would have been really a huge disaster and something that is good to know. And it is part of our checklist to actually close that when we're traveling, because we, if we are traveling with our gray tank full, you don't want that all over the place because that's going to make a huge mess in here. So that's definitely something you need to put on your checklist. The thing is, our sensors, for some reason, are not working, especially the gray. The olding is accurate. Is accurate. The fresh is accurate. Battery is accurate. The gray is not. And even after we dump, it still shows us full. Yeah. So we cannot rely on this. We pretty much, you know, go with experience. You you notice how much you've been using, how much you've been doing dishes. So for those that shower inside their escape, just, just keep that in mind. The only two things that we never used on the escape, we never even tested, is the uh, barbecue propane outside and the shower outside. So just for those that are 
putting their options on the new escape. Uh, maybe it's good to have. We haven't had the need to use it. We don't barbecue much outside. Right? So at least for us, I'm happy we have it, but in six months, we, we never even tried it out. Yeah, we don't even have a barbecue. And to be honest, because we're plant-based, I don't see us getting it because it just takes up space. And the shower again. I mean, I, I was. Oh, I could definitely see us using the outdoor shower at some point. It's just. If you're by a beach, you want to rinse off the sand or something like that from your feet, yeah. But besides that. Or at a really hot campground, it would be cool if we had a table to set up an out outdoor kitchen. I think that could definitely be practical, and I'm glad we have it. We but... need to get the table. Yeah, but in terms of the actual propane hookups for the barbecue, it's not something that we're we're going to use probably, but I do appreciate that we have it because it's good for resale. Yeah, even the shower thing, it's just we never get to it. Yeah, exactly. Can you think of anything else? No, I think that's pretty much it. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're still in love, guys. We still love this trailer and actually we're even more tickled with it now that we've discovered how to fix the condensation issue. So now it's not an issue anymore and we're so grateful to Tammy and Jim not only for inviting us into their trailer and showing us around but also for helping us solve this riddle. We hope you liked this video, we hope it was informative and if you have any other questions about the escape trailer lifestyle, please put it in the comments below, like and subscribe, and we will see you in the next video.